we didn't have face cam. Now you guys can see my face. But anyway, so welcome back to Sakura Succubus. Where we left off, we literally had realized and revealed the truth that all three of the girls that we have literally ran into are succubi. So, what we have to do now is basically have sex with them. Yeah. Didn't expect that from my mouth, right? It's literally the game. What do you want me to do? Anyway, let's get it. What? I'm woken the next day by the shrill beeping of my alarm clock. Its tiny ring pieces my skull like a skewer, and I wince. God, would it kill you to be quiet for like five seconds? My alarm clock, of course, doesn't listen to me. It's an in <laughs> inorganic object that can't think or feel. Sometimes I wish I was an organic object too. Then I wouldn't have to suffer s from so many debilitated headaches. Don't we all? I must have had way too much to drink yesterday. What happened again? The events from last night returned to my before befuddled mind in drifts and drabs but my alarm clock is still trilling away as insistent as ever it's so loud that it start setting my teeth on edge I guess I can't ignore it any longer not if I want to cling to whatever remains of my sanity all right all right I'm coming shut up already I haul myself from foot from my futon. <laughs> I haul myself from my futon and seized my clock. As I have every day for the last three years, I turn it off, cutting short its insane clunger, then sigh in relief. Finally, peace and quiet. Now I can think about last night a little more clearly. Work got out last night. I remember that much. Then I menandered to the train station. I was struck with a sudden desire to have a stiff drink. And once more, my sudden desire to see Marina. I traveled across Tokyo to that classic bar when I first met Marina. I hadn't seriously expected to see her again, but Lady Luck must have been on my side because there she was. We talked a little, drank more, rather, rather more than a little. Then she invited me back to her office. We spent a long time together and then... Mm, though my alarm clock has been silent, my forehead still throbs. I press my head on my temple. My teeth worry my lower lip. Images flashing through my mind, all of them equally improbable. Horns, wings, a tail. Marina isn't human, she's, succu she's a succubus. She stained herself through the strength of human endorsion and her physical stamina is far greater than any average women's. Marina's not the only succubus in Tokyo, either. Akiyu, the famous idol, is another of her younger sisters, and so was that strange girl I met on the train, Cosmos. I think Marina said her, her name was. Now Marina's taken a special interest in me. Sucky by all over Japan will flock to me. Marina warned me as much before she asked her chauffeur to take me home. My sister will start wall start coming after you despite to claim my heart desperate to claim your heart excuse me um, I hope that you have enough stamina to handle us is that really happening that sounds patiently unbelievable but the longer I lie here the sharper the memories become Marina 
really is a succubus. She transformed before my very eyes. I might have been drunk last night, but it wasn't so trashed I've invented a ridiculous scene like that whole cloth. My imagination's not that good. That's why I want to be a photojournalist rather than the writer. I'm a skeptic. And I can only believe in th believe things if I see them with my own eyes. I'm bad at playing pretend. A few days prior, I would have scuffled at a mere idea of a sucky guy. But Marina's inhuman features have swept my doubts aside. How can I explain her wings and horns without the aid of the supernatural? That is interesting though. Wakazuki Marina sure is incredible. In more ways than one. I roll over in my futon sighing. Since it's Tuesday I need to get up, freshen up, and get to work, but my daily grind seems much less pressing than per usual. My mind's almost entirely ensconced with Wakazuki Marina and her succubi sisters. What's gonna happen to me now? I guess as of today, my normal life has well and truly ended. That is true. Despite my ominous portents, however, the day unfolds more and less the same as it always does. I get dressed, eat a hasty breakfast, shovel my shoes, and then head off to work. I catch the 7.30 train per usual and then relax as the door slides shut with a hiss. My hour commute to work pass uneventfully, though I kept my eyes peeled, glancing this way and that though through the crowd, I see hid nor hair of the elusive cosmos. I arrived at work after 8.30 and greet my fellow employees. Then I set to work on the numerous tasks my boss sent me the day prior. Work finishes at 1700 on the dot. Much to my relief, I've worked overtime so much I can't remember the last time I left the office while the sun was still up. Maybe some benevolent god heard my plenitive prayer the day prior and decided to throw me a bone. I walk to the train station in high spirits and board a train back home. The afternoon train headed for Tokyo suburbs is almost as busy as the morning train headed right into its heart. I hemmed in as always as businessmen and women of various ages with a few high school kids thrown in for good measure. The businessmen kept their gaze cold and unapproachable, their narrow eyes fixed upon the scenery as it flies past through the windows. The high school students, meanwhile, are busy chattering among themselves, tapping out text messages and giggling at funny jokes. The young kids must have had busy days themselves, full of rote learning and club activities, but they're bursting with energy. I can't help but envy them. I wish I was young too. You might not think as to look at me now, but I was pretty popular back in high school. Um, I've always been tall for my age, and so I've played uh, the school's basketball team and it netted me quite a lot of respect among the classmates. In my last year of high school, I even managed to snag myself a girlfriend. She wasn't the prettiest or the smartest girl in class, but I liked her a lot. Even now, I can remember her serious face and long, dark hair. I broke things off with her when we graduated from high school and went to university. It was a mutual agreement. We were too young and immature to commit a long-distance relationship. I don't know if I miss her, per se, but if I often think back in time we spent together. It wasn't a cheerful, giggly girl like the high school students on this train. She was usually quiet and withdrawn. But I think that's what drew me to her in the first place. She wasn't drop-dead gorgeous, but she was pretty. 
Her charms were understated, very traditionally Japanese. Um, she had delicate features, pale skin, and a snob nose. Uh, she's always ne needled me to take my studies seriously in that sense. She was rather motherly. Uh, she tried to make me lunch too, but her cooking skills were subpar. But that might be putting it nicely. Her hamburger steak was tougher than old boot. Her egg omelettes spilled down to the middle and her ginger chicken was far too salty. Damn. Damn! Well, I can see why he said that. I tried my best to eat her food, but I've always ended up hurtling to the boys' restroom, gagging that made her scowl. She scowled at, while I looked at other girls too. Her jealous fits were so cute. Uh, they always made me laugh. Which, of course, upsets her all the more. I can still remember all the things we did together. Though it's been in over a decade since we last spoke. We studied together in the school library. She gave me chocolate on Valentine's Day. And sometimes we went to the cafe and theme parks together. When was the last time I've been to a cafe with a cute girl? I feel like it's been forever. My life's been nothing but work for the last few years. I haven't had a chance to cut loose and have fun. Being an adult really does suck. Tell me about it. It'd be nice if I go on a date again, like I did before. Not like that will happen. It's highly unlikely a cute, perfect multi-girlfriend would fall from the sky and into my lap. I guess you could say Marina fits the bill, but she's not really a girlfriend material. She's too mature for such a juvenile label. She's more of a partner. Though she preferred being called mistress. I like Marina well enough, but there's something a little bit intimidating about her. She's not like at all like my first girlfriend. But then again, nobody is. It's impossible to replace a memory. I'm being stupid. I should give up on dating. I'm not a teenager anymore. What? But why? You don't look that old to me, but I think you're very handsome. Ha, huh, that's nice to know, mysterious voice, but I- Wait, what? I can feel something, but not too- Some things, pressing against my chest. A familiar scent of floral perfume wafts about me, and I feel fingers grip the sleeves of my shirt. Somebody's pressing their bodies against me, but who? I look down, bemused by the audacity of this mysterious person. Is it Cosmos again? I swear to God, if it's Cosmos again, I'm going to lose my mind. Is it her again? Oh, for fuck's sake! Well, I knew it. And my uh, muddlement soon morphs into full-blown disbelief. You're that pervert from yesterday. Pervert? Maybe I am. But that isn't very nice. You shouldn't shout your things out in public when you just... I know this bitch ain't serious, right? She literally just... I'm bad with people, and even I know that much. Uh, sorry, I was surprised. It just slipped out. Fancy seeing you here. I recognize this girl, but to be more precise, Recognize her body. I never got to see her face during the last encounter. The curves of her spine was pressing against my chest. Her diaphragm prayer resting snugly against me. I quite intimately acquainted with that behind of hers, but her face was something of a mystery. But now that I can finally see what she really looks like, I can say that certainty that she's just as adorable as I anticipated. Well, it's not like she wasn't gonna fit the bill to begin with, so whatever. Her eyes are a soft amber hue lined with long, luxurious lashes. Her nose was small, cute button, but her lips were faintly shiny with gloss. Her hair was lilac, but it fades with an icy blue about her tips. About the tips, sorry. <laughs> Not her tips. 
<laughs> what are you saying? Don't say anything differently. Um, it cuts in a rough kind of bob, but a part of it is tied back with a snobby pointy tail. A top of her head is perked with a pair of cat ears. They don't very look very practical. Um, I'm not sure what per what purpose they serve, really, beyond an, an, an aesthetic one. But then again, a lot of women wear high heels, Marina included. Um, and I'm not sure what practical purpose they serve. Either... Can they damage women's feet? Plus, the sharp spikes can get stuck in the gutters. <sighs> These girls' choice of headwear might be practical, but she's wearing a sturdy pair of sneakers on her feet. A pink jacket, and those are very short shorts to serve complete the look. She might be younger than I am, but only by a handful of years. She's most likely in her early 20s. Though, if she really is a succubus, her age might not scale like that of a normal human's. For all I know, she could be centuries old. What a 500 year old with a pair of cat ears though? The Jerry will still Still out on that one. Your name's Cosmos, right? Right. Cosmos affirms with this lethargic nod of her head. Um, there was something a bit off about this girl. Actually, and no, I'm not just referring by the cat ears. Her movement seems a second or a, so delayed. And then there's the fact that she's pressing herself against me in the middle of a how is it trained? Doesn't this girl understand the concept of personal space? How do you know my name? Marina told me. She explained who you are yesterday. You're a succubus, huh? That's right. Cosmos nods once more. There's stubby ponytail bouncing. I'm not the only, that it's not the only part of her art, autonomy that's bouncing either. But, I try not to stare too blankly. You say that, but that's an overstatement. So, you know everything, Marina told you? Yeah, she did. Oh, good. Cosmo smiles. That makes this easier. I don't like explaining things. You're, you're not first ask questions later kind of girl. I don't like asking, it's awkward. Talking with people is difficult for me, but I want to try and make an effort with you. Well, due to your cute face, I think it's a honestly safe to say. Why not? Cosmos presses her chest more firmly against my body. I know we're still strangers, but I love you a lot. I want you. M me Yes! Hey, you talked about you. Marina too. They said you smell good. You're not wrong. Cosmos inhales deeply, her nostrils quivers. You're addictive, sweet like candy. Marina is picky. Her taste is discerning. If she likes you, you must be special. I like you too. So, let's go. As the train begins to slow as it pulls to the next station, it's not the station I want to get off at, but Cosmo doesn't seem to care about the little details like that. She grabs a hold of my hand, her fingers whittled with mine, her hand is very small, and my mind dwarves hers. She's small and pixie-like, but she's incredibly insistent. Hey, Cosmos, wait! I try to pull away from her, but she doesn't listen. The train home. Uh, the. Whoa. Run that by me again? The train's automatic doors open with a hiss. <sighs> Cosmos drags me forward, buoyed with numerous passengers who all struggle to get off the train. I find myself pushed forward. I feel like a fish trying to swim upriver. The current, or in that case, Cosmos' tiny hand, is far too strong. I'm being swept away. What, 
What do you want with me? Where are we going? Cosmos glance, glances at me over the shoulder. Her overrun hair flutters. She smiles and then says sweetly, On a date. God damn! That is a figure to be seen. But we're going to hold that here. Hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys do, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Make sure to let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join the Iron Hive today. It's been said, guys. Later.